One minute to go. Hello, good evening, everyone from Turin, Italy. It's the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament final between Croatia and Italy. The winner goes to the Olympics. Well, it's been a great week in Turin, and the Italian fans have watched their team go unbeaten. Uh, they watched them beat earlier in the week Croatia, and what do you know? These two teams are going to meet again. Uh, Croatia winning their semifinal against Greece, Italy winning their semifinal against Mexico. The question, can Italy beat Croatia twice? It is a very tough opponent. This is the situation. All of these teams have qualified until you get over to the right where it says Olympic qualifying tournament. You've got three question marks. We've got three FIBA Olympic qualifying tournaments. This will decide one of the teams that goes to the Olympics. Uh, there are also qualifying tournaments in Belgrade, which will also be decided tonight. Serbia taking on Puerto Rico. And then Canada will face France in Manila tomorrow for that final spot. So the winner of this game will qualify for the Rio de Janeiro games. And the fans are excited about the prospects. Italy haven't played at the Olympics since 2004 when they made it to the final. Well, I'm Jeff Taylor, and I'm joined by Lloyd Gardner. And Lloyd. These two teams play the best game, really, of this Olympic qualifying tournament uh, on day two. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. Did Jeff? You know, went right down to the wire, really, didn't it? It was a uh, two-point game at the half, but a strong third period from uh, Italy it was enough to have them take the lead. They took that quarter 21 to 12, and that was really the benchmark or the reason they went on to record the 67 to 60 victory. Good evening, everyone. If you're just joining us, it's the Paralympico here in Turin, Italy. What a city. What a tournament we've had. The Olympic qualifying tournament, I think, has lived up to expectations. I mean, I can tell you one thing right now. I wanted to be nowhere else, and it has actually not only lived up to expectations, it surpassed them. Italy will take on this Croatia team. They beat them earlier in the week. And Let's just say there's no love loss between these two teams. It was a great game, and it got pretty uh, testy at times with Croatia. But I think without question, you have to really admire how Croatia have bounced back after last year's disappointment at the Eurobasket when they lost in the round of 16. They've come back, and uh, here they are, led by Bogdan Bogdan, uh, excuse me, Boyan Bogdanovic and Dario Šarić have just been terrific. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Jeff. You said it got physical. It'll be interesting to see how that crosses over to essentially what is game two of the series. So some booze, I think, is Alexander Petrovic, the Croatia coach, comes out. Well, it's uh, a big event, but as international basketball goes, it's all about patriotism and everything else. And now we're going to have the playing of the national anthems for both teams, starting with Croatia.
It gets to you every time when you hear that Italian national anthem. There's just something about it, and it's really kind of uh, added to it's already a hot atmosphere inside the Paralimpico. And the face mask wearing Marco Bellinelli uh, protecting that broken cheekbone. Alexander Petrovic, the Croatia coach. So many interesting characters involved in this game tonight. And here's three of them as well. Matej Boltauser in the middle from Slovenia. Uh, Jorge Vasquez on the right from Puerto Rico. And Emilio Perez from Spain on the left. So confirmation those three guys have done a good job uh, to be given this game as the referees. So this is... Uh, what it's all about really I mean both of these teams had dreamed about getting into the final last year but they came up short here they are if they win this game they're going to the Olympics uh, for Italy quite a quite a lineup yeah I mean you look at it a number of well-known names in there uh, Andrea Bargani Daniela Gallinari for sure uh, the star probably so far in this game has been uh, this tournament has been Marco Bellinelli he's been kind of the leader for Italy but watch out for Daniel Hackett he plays such a crucial role in the game, in the victory over Croatia, especially on the defensive end. So Gentili in that starting lineup and not to Tome. And Tome will come off the bench for Alexander Petrovic. But well, we've known that Shadic has been outstanding. We, we know that Bogdanovic, Boyan Bogdanovic, uh, Simon stepped up against Greece. Well, that's what we said, isn't it? Bogdanovic and Saric have been abs absolutely arguably two of the best players in this tournament. The question is, who else comes for Croatia? Is it going to be um, Mario Hezonja? Is it going to be Kronoslav Simon? Is it going to be, you know, any of these other Croatian players, but somebody has to step up? So Miro Belan starts again with Saric, Bogdanovic, Roko Ukic, and Kronoslav Simon. But no Mario Hezonja. Well, the coach told us that Hezonja was going to be guarding who was it? Daniel uh, Hackett. Daniel Hackett. So maybe he'll come in. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's that's just one of the many intriguing matchups that you've got. You, we, we've talked about, you know, Dario Saric, how well he's been playing. He'll be matching up against Gallinari. But also, you know, these guys are keys. Bargiani needs to score on the inside for Italy. And Saric has to continue his, you know, scintillating performance up until this, this point. Yeah, Sharic, for my money, it's Bogdanovic and Sharic, number one and number two in terms of uh, quality performances. And they are neck and neck in this tournament. Ettore Messina, well, second stint is Italy coach. And so far, he's done what everybody uh, hoped and even expected him to do. He's got him into this final. There's still that big hurdle to clear, though. It's, they've got to clear it one more time. And uh, Alexander Petrovic. He certainly works the referees, and I think that's why he heard it uh, in the pregame warm-ups. Well, he, he believed Croatia lost because of the influence of the referees who changed the rhythm of the game, as he put it, in the third period, that period that they lost 21 to 12 in the last game. You know, that's the difference. Nine point swing in that quarter. They ended up losing by, by seven. So he felt the referees had a, a strong influence towards Italy winning this game. He'll be working them, like you say, from the sideline, but... You know, let's let's just hope for another game like the first one because it really was a back and forth game in in uh, in Croatia's opening game, uh, excuse me, and never once in the game was there a double figure lead. Well, good evening, everyone. If you're just joining us, welcome to the Paralimpico in Turin in the north of Italy. It's the final of the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament between Croatia and Italy. Croatia start things off wearing the white, attacking, and Simone starts with a three, just as he did against Greece. Well, Croatia have been known to have some quick starts 
in this tournament, and that's uh, probably the quickest of the lot. They came out exceptional against um, against Greece yesterday. Jumped out 31 points. They scored in the first quarter. Now Bellinelli, and what a great shot from Marco Bellinelli. And now Simon will probe and makes the pass to Ukic. Simon from the corner. And Gallinari, who had 15 points in the first half against Mexico, gets the rebound. Still haven't seen Gallinari at his best in this tournament. Maybe he's saving the best for last. Oh, I can't wait for this matchup again. Gallinari versus Saric. Gentili in the lane, and that's a very positive move for him. I, I wonder if the, the, the move to put Gentili in is just to get him going. See if they can go to him early, get him some confidence, because he hasn't played well so far here in Turin. I thought he played well as a starter last year at the Eurobasket. Here's Shadich. And a foul called on Gallinari. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Uh, Gentile is a brilliant player. We see him here. You know, he's got all the skill in the world. He's been a big time scorer throughout his career, really, playing in Italy. Um, so he has the quality. He just hasn't put it together in the opening games, has he? Bogdanovic. And uh, Gentile has uh, the assignment. Uh, Simone drives in and offensive foul. I didn't see that. I mean, Bellinelli made a big deal of it. Seen as frustrated. He's shouting his, his players on the sideline. And, and a now a technical foul has been called already. Simon now yeah. arguing. Simon has got the technical. I mean, to, in fairness to him, I was, I was surprised they called the foul. I thought it was going to be potential three-point play. So Petrovic uh, just kind of pacing the sidelines. Watch this. Oh, so is, is it Bogdanovic no, that no, got no. the tee? It, it, Simon got it, but then Bogdanovic is the captain. Okay, He's so gone he over, over to speak to the him. official, uh, trying to calm the situation. For, for, for me, you can see... Kronoslav Seaman had the advantage on the drive. He was a step ahead of Bellinelli. There's no point in him, you know, making the contact or making the move offensively to push him out of the way because he was so far in advance. It's Bellinelli that's trying to claw his way back into the play. Bellinelli. And Bargnani follows Shadic. Holds his ground and Bargnani travels. Messina's not happy because they've twice taken very quick shots from the perimeter Italy. And that's what he's kind of saying. You see, now he's talking. That's directed to Marco Bellinelli, who's just catch and shot the ball really quickly out of the offense two times in a row. Um, it's very similar to how we saw Greece play at the start of the game against Croatia, if you remember. For those of you that saw it, Greece come down first five possession shot threes. Yeah. Because Croatia just gave them the shot. If you don't make them, it then changes the complexity of the game. Croatia went up by 24 on Greece, and then Greece came all the way back to take the lead, only uh, for Croatia then to win. Here's Bogdanovic, drives in. The defense. Hackett brings it up the floor. Heads up. Really has become a key man for this Italy team. Puts up a jumper. And Gentile battling for the rebound. Shadich with the board. Shadich pulls up and rattles out. You can see the nerves of both teams. I think offensively tough to get a basket right now. Gallinari turns, shoots, misses. Roko Ukic at the line and uh, missed everything. And a great defense from Hackett. I mean, he did everything but block the shot. I like this from Italy. Go to the inside. Nice pass to Gentile, travel but travel. Yeah. Spot on on the official. I like the call from Italy. Hackett posting up against Rocco Ukic. Gentile making the cuts as well. It allows Bargani to play around that foul line area. You see him kind of operating higher, and that's what he likes to do more 
than play in the low post, but they've got very effective guards um, at posting up. So, yeah, it was a good call. You saw him catch it, and then he, like, jumped both feet. Here's Simon, looks off the pass, drives in, misses the layup. Beautiful move, poor finish. Bellinelli's going to be open here. Bellinelli back to the corner. Gentile, and it runs out again. <laughs> That's been his tournament, really. Great move. Shot looks like it's going to fall, just rims out. Now the scrap and a technical foul called on Bargnani. I think it's on Gentile. No, no, no you're right. My fault. Matej Bolthauser, and I think it's easier to make that call the technical after you've called one on the other team. So you got to be consistent. Now remember, Italy missed their technical free throw, and here's Boyan Bogdanovic, and Kuzin comes in. So that's two fouls now. He picks up the foul in the technical, so Bargnani takes a seat. And Bogdanovic. And uh, they're going to stop because there's a scoreboard issue. The problem with the score between Italy and Croatia again. Something's happened. They've had all week to get this one sorted. <laughs> this could actually help. Italy because they seem to be not in sync well, both teams are it's a frustrated start you can see what what it means Croatia have got frustrated with the official they've got to be careful of that because it was the third period while Italy played fantastic in that third quarter of the first game it was Croatia that kind of took themselves out of it as well by getting too involved with the ref referees worrying about the calls what was happening how the game was going how they were being you know um, harshly done by so they just got to refocus on the game Italy this means so much to them they've just got to calm so timeout on the floor Croatia lead at four to two over Italy Well, Tori Messina, as we have a delay here, as they try to sort out a scoreboard issue, uh, trying to, to get his players' attention, not really uh, in the flow. I, Gallinari was quite interesting yesterday after their win, talking about how defensively they've been consistently good in this tournament, and that has to continue. But offensively, they've had their ups and downs. Well, I think you have to remember, all of these teams have had a short preparation phase coming into this tournament. They haven't been together for a long period of time. Um, they've coming off the back of club seasons, domestic seasons as well. So offensively, that's something that, that often takes a little bit longer to really get together. Whereas defensively, it's quite easy to establish the rules, the principles that you're going to play with. Um, so, you know, it, it, it makes sense that both of these teams, their defense will be ahead of their offense at this stage in the in in their preparation, in, in their competition. And, and you can see that from the scores. Uh, Croatia have only reached 70 once. That was against Tunisia. Uh, Italy have only reached over 70 once, and, and that was against Mexico yesterday, where they scored 79. Eridori uh, looking all nervously, and all the players just still waiting. They put the uh, score back up, and it looked like they'd solved it, but now they've switched it off, everything off, uh, except the, the names of the two teams and the and the time, the actual time. So all these fans are having to wait. So in our downtime, Jeff, quiz trivia question for you. What is special about Rocco Ukic in these two teams? What he's played in Italy, you mean? No, the only man to have played in oh. an Olympic oh, Games that. on either team. Yeah. So, so again, when we're talking about why this game means so much, Rocco Ukic, the only player on either team that's ever participated in an Olympic Games. That's why they're all here is to get to Rio and that's why it means a lot you know Italy what an opportunity they're playing at home they've got their home fans they've got the genius Atori Messina back in charge and and as I've said during the course of this tournament for me I think this is the last opportunity 
four guys like Bellinelli. Uh, let me cut in real quick. That's, that's Ivan Perisic, the Croatia, Croatian football player, played at the European Championship and plays for Inter Milan, so he's made the short trip up. He shows you again what an occasion this is. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, no, your, your point is well taken. In fact, he's also the only player here to have won or who, to have claimed a spot for the Olympics at a FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament because Croatia had to go through Athens at the Olympic qualifying tournament. Yeah. They got one of those three spots. That was when it was just one 12 team tournament. And now you've got three 16 tournaments. And uh, I'd say it appears Serbia have had the most straightforward path to the Olympics, but we'll see. Whereas Manila, you've got France and Canada now trading blows, and this one might be the most hotly contested of all if we ever get this thing started again. <laughs> Gone on too long now. No one wants this. Yeah, they're letting the players get on the floor to shoot now because they've been out for too long. It just takes the the energy that was in the gym away a, a little, doesn't it? So Bellinelli, as you look at him wearing the face mask and the broken cheekbone, um, he's had kind of a difficult start to the game. He's missed two, he's missed three shots. No, he's 0 of, 0 of 2, Bellinelli. And it would be interesting to see with Petrovic and Messina and these two teams, which one will be more negatively affected by the delay, if, if any at all. I mean, the only positive is we're only a few minutes into the game, aren't we? You know, we're not that deep in, six and a half minutes still to go. We don't want this to happen with three minutes to go in a tight game. It's interesting. It's unfortunate, really, because you got such a great occasion and there's just such a, an incredible atmosphere. And uh, everybody's into it. Roko Ukic. Now you've got the referees I'm not sure that that's in their skill set is to go fix the scoreboard so they just have to wait and hope uh, that this will get sorted out. Looks like we're getting back. We've got 10 minutes up now so it seems to be working again. Now Roch has got to set the time and score now. There's Messina. And uh, he hasn't had that much time with Italy. There's Kruslin. He hasn't played much at all. I'll tell you what's interesting about Petrovic, just reading his comments in the build up to this tournament. Um, he really had a clear idea of how he wanted to play. And once he was able to get Simon and Sharic, uh finally in training camp, which wasn't long before the start of the OQT, I think it was two weeks before, and everything started clicking. And he, you know, and then at, right at the end of his preparations, he's like, right, we're ready to go. This is exactly what I foresaw. I think we can go have a good OQT. And so it's proved to be. I mean, we think that they've got some weaknesses potentially that they could fill. My question is, are they deep enough if they get to the Olympics to uh, to have a big run, to have a big tournament? Might they add a player or two, but maybe, maybe not. But this guy's been exceptional here with the ball, Bogdanovich. And really, I think he's probably been the player of the tournament to this point. Yeah, he's just been exceptional. And it's, I mean, he misses this one, but this is why he's been so good or impressed me so much, his ability to finish off the drive. Um, you know, he, re he just doesn't back down no matter who's in front of him. We saw him yesterday just going right at the combo, just laying it up over the top of him. Um, you said, you're right, Bogdanovich has, has just seen his stock rise 
if that is possible for a man which had a great NBA season playing with the Brooklyn Nets. He averaged uh, 11, point, 11 and a half points a game. He started half the games this season in the NBA, so fantastic but, pedigree. But you know, Charlotte is uh, pretty much almost been his equal really for what he's been able to do. He had 11 points, 10 rebounds in the first game against Italy, then 16 and eight against Greece. So those are very good numbers. Yeah, and well, don't forget, he also guarded Antetokounmpo for much of that game. And we said that the sign for me of um, how good Dario Saric is, is that you forget how young he is. He's just 22 years of age. Um, he's a fantastic talent. He's still got a lot of room for improvement, a lot of room for growth left in him. You know, a lot of years of basketball. But realistically, we could be seeing Dario Saric out here for another 10 years for the Croatian national team. Gosh, it really is uh, kind of starting to get annoying now waiting this long. And you know, if we're feeling it, the coaches and the players have to be feeling it as well. Does this make his job harder, do you think, Messina? You don't know until the game starts again. Like you said, this often will uh, really help or hinder one team. One team may really be hit, they'll take their momentum away or they'll come out flat afterwards. And it's very difficult to judge who, who that's going to happen to. So just as a reminder, Italy got to the quarterfinals last year. They had to get to the final to qualify for the Olympics, the final of the Eurobasket, and they lost to Lithuania. And uh, now I see what's going to happen. Now, this is interesting. I'm not sure I like this. Well, you can't see it on the set yet, so I'll wait till they show it. It looks like they're bringing out an old time scoreboard that they're going to put on the court, possibly. Uh, as an emergency or as until they can get the, the clock fixed. But this is a bizarre situation that we're encountering right now for this level of a game with this importance. It's like taking the take going back in time, isn't it, Lloyd? Yeah. I, like 30 <laughs> years ago, 40 years ago, having a scoreboard clock on the court. It's incredible, but I suppose if you've got the issue with the giant scoreboard up there, there's not a lot you can do. Um, it's not as though they can get somebody up there in a, in a, a very short period of time. We have these two giant scoreboards hanging in the corners of the arenas. Um, and they're the ones who are out of action. They do have the benefit, if we go to these sort of portable units, there you see them. Um, There's just been put by the Croatia Benz, one of them to the right. But they do have the advantage of the sure big screen way up in the top of the arena, a little bit too high but they can put the scorers and fouls and uh, all the other information that's contain contained on the, the hanging scores. Floyd, I just remember, this this has something to do with you and me. Does this bring back memories? Of last year? Tunisia? Afrobasket? Yeah. The uh, Nigerians dunks <laughs> hung on the rim with about a couple of minutes left in, in the game of a blowout win, and uh, the backboard came crashing down. And that was uh, about a couple of hours delay, it seems like. Yeah. Certainly it impacted games that followed as well. So maybe uh, maybe we counted our chickens before they hatched, thinking that this was going to be smooth sailing. Now they're trying to get that switched on. Now it looks like they may have fixed the other clock. What also confuses me is these clocks, they've put them both by the benches. So anybody on our side of the court can't see the score, they can't see anything because they're both on the same side. They need one to be on the far side at least. But they can't fit it in. There's no, there's not enough room. So Bogdanovich, look at him trying to cheer. There are some Croatian fans here, by the way. What a mass of people we had to walk through just to get into the arena. And there's also traffic, unusual. Usually it's been a pretty straight shot, so. This is a big game, and unfortunately, it's uh, had a delay. And uh, the ramifications, obviously, they've got to get it going for different reasons. 
Good for the latecomers, though, those that did struggle with the traffic. So if you're just tuning in or if you've been watching, just as a reminder, we do have uh, an interruption because of a scoreboard malfunction. Um, and it's probably been about 10 minutes now. The game was really hot, and they had to stop. And it looks like they're starting to get on top of, stop, top of it now. You'd almost rather them start all over again. <laughs> but that means we'd have to work extra. But then again, that would be fun. There's Pepe Poeta. You can see him hearing some cheers because he's going to play for Torino. It's gone again. OK, so now the main school board has gone again, so they're going to have to go with the one in the corner. Clearly, this clock not made in Italy because they tend to make good things, don't they? Yes. <laughs> so this is the final of the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament in Turin. And we've got a delay uh, because of a scoreboard malfunction. And they are putting what appears to be scoreboards at the end of the court beside each bench. And uh, there's Roko Ukic laughing about it. I'm glad somebody can laugh about it. And I'm guessing we'll have had about a 15 minute delay. And the fans have been patient, but now they're starting. We're starting to hear some whistles. Now they're getting frustrated because the scoreboard keeps teasing you that it's back. They got it to 4 2 shown on the scoreboard the right time. And then all of a sudden it, it disappeared. So that's where the frustration comes from, I think, from the fans. I wonder what, if Petrovic loses, he'll have something to say about this. But if he wins, I'm sure it'll be fine. There's Gallinari and there's Petrovic going over the game plan, perhaps. So, brother of the late Drazen Petrovic might remember. Uh, one of the all time greats. A lot of people would say he is the greatest, certainly the iconic Drazen Petrovic. And there's an icon himself, Ettore Messina. There's the, now this is. So six and a half minutes <laughs> remaining in the first quarter. Uh, looks like we're going to have some uh, old timey scoreboards set up. And uh, we'll just have to make do with what we've got until they can fix until they can fix the uh, the game clock. One positive having a look at the stats while we're waiting is that this break might Force them to go up because they've been pretty horrendous in the early stages. Croatia one of six, Italy one of six from the field. So it's not been an offensive fest of basketball, has it? You know, three turnovers and two made field goals in the entire game. There you see it. The game is being uh, interrupted momentarily for technical reasons. We hope to have it 
coming back shortly. So looks like the Croatians are taking this in good spirit. Except Luka Babic, he's not laughing. Meanwhile, the other game uh, is just an absolute blowout. It looks like uh, Serbia, Serbian fans were already uh, booking their flights to Rio. They're up 39 to 14 on Puerto Rico. Well, for those of you, for those of you joining for, joining us from that game, we, we will be back to action shortly. Yes. Yeah. What an incredible we know, performance. We know for a fact this is going to be a tight game. Now, Ettore Messina on the right, the Italy coach. Alexander Petrovic on the left, the Croatia coach and the referees are now talking about uh, the way forward. Ato Petrovic. I can see right there Ato Petrovic say, what can we do? They say we're going to have to use these clocks momentarily. So that means you're going to have to listen to us. And also just keep up with the score. It probably won't affect you as much on the TV. You'll be able to watch the graphics, but here we go. Well, that's the, the big screen above, but it's so high up, it can't be used for the players. You can see it's right in the, uh, the ceiling, and that's the scoreboard that's causing us all the issues. So you see the referees looking up. No players can see that, that big screen at the top, so that's why they've had to bring these additional clocks in at court level that the players can then see at a glance as the game's going on. So they can see time, they can see score. So Messina talks to uh, Pedef and Vasquez, the referees. And Gallinari does a little bit of uh, stretching. I don't think they like the fact that the referees want. I'm guessing, but I think that they're, they're talking about whether they can just use the screens at the top, and the players don't like that because it's too it's too high. You you can't see. I, I mean, the the time is above the shot clock over the basket, but if you want to see the the score, which you would as a player, if you want to see the clock, you know, you look all the way up there. Someone can run past you and and back up. The ball can go past your head when you're when you're looking up so I, I don't think that's the right option no that's not the solution no they've got the other clocks going though on the sides now they've been set See the Italian Olympic Committee president, I think, is here mid-court watching, and it's also President Petrucci of uh, the Italian Federation. There's Sandro Gambas here, the former Italy coach. Okay, folks. Well, uh, we're getting ready to, to start them up again. It's Croatia leading four to two, three and a half minutes into the game. And we've had a delay of about 20 minutes with the scoreboard malfunction. So why couldn't this have happened, uh, say, in one of the earlier games, one of the blowouts? Just doesn't happen, does it? It did happen when, in when one of the earlier to. games as well. <laughs> well, it happened in this game. Yeah. So they're going with just the big scoreboard above us. Well, the fans wow. sitting across. Oh, so they're not going to run the ones no. at the end. No, they've gone off again. I'm not sure why they're still there. Seems kind of dangerous position. Yeah. Okay, now it's back on. So you can see the court in the corner over there. Oh. That one is on. Oh no, it's working now, yeah. Just hope nobody runs into it. That would be something else, wouldn't it? So Croatia up four to two. Simon. 
Bogdanovich. And the pass goes off of Simon and out of bounds. Great defense from Italy. Both these teams have been built on their defensive possessions. The way they've shut other teams down. He's a strong possession. Yeah, and foul a foul away. called on Roko Ukic. Hackett inbounds it to Gentile. And Gentile is good. Soft touch, and he's going in twice to score inside. Uh, they've gone to him early, haven't they? I like this move. They want a little bit more offense, and he can give that to them. Four apiece. Uh, we see the captain's back now. Now Shadic. And fouled by Gallinari. Watch this. Here's uh, Gentile again. Post up Simon. So two fouls now on Danilo Gallinari. Uh, the same reason trying to use his arms to keep Gentile, excuse me, to keep uh, Sharic out of the lane. Luckily for Italy, that might be their strongest spot though, with Nicola Melli coming in. He had a great game yesterday, Melli. Simon, that's good. Brunus love Simon. Well, another hot start from him. This game is looking like yesterday for a Croatia. Solid start. Cuisine battling down low with Miro Bilan. Now Gentile turns, puts it up and in. Oh, what a, yeah. what a decision to start him. That's really paid off. Yeah, absolutely. That's why Messina is on. And now he might come out as well to get Datomi going as well. So Gentile, with a bit of confidence, might come out now. But he's just scored twice in a row. Bogdanovich gets inside, puts it up and in. Good move from Bogdanovich. I was just thinking he's been quiet in the early stages. Straight away, comes back, gets to the ring. Bellinelli turns, gets it blocked by Rocco Lenioc. It's Bellinelli off to a bad start. Shardich sets the pick, rolls. He's going to get it back. Nope. And Hackett sneaks in there, takes it away from Miro Bilan. He's going to force it in. Oh, he gets swatted. But a block was called beforehand by Simon, and that's number three because he picked up the technical earlier. Yeah. So what a shame for Croatia. Simon having his. You know, a great start, six points. There's Bogdanovic. Yeah, what a finish. Just the, the, the use of the body as well. Did you see off the dribble? Took a couple of dribbles, just sort of jumped into his man to shut him off so he couldn't get the shot blocked. Means Mario Hazonia's in for the first time, though, wearing the number eight. And that might be, a, a, you know, a blessing in disguise for Croatia. If Hazonia has one of those games that we know he's capable of doing, you know, he could be an X factor. He was definitely in good spirits last night after the Greek game, came to the press conference, had a good sense of humor. Now four, coming up on the four-minute mark, and Hazania has got his first touch, gets it back to Bogdanovic. Dribbles. Boy, Bogdanovic gets it to Beeline. Oh, he gets swatted by Cuisine. But Datome wasn't able to control it. Now they've reset the shot clock. I'll get adjusted. Great work. Great block by Cuisine. Yeah, I've had good performances off the bench, Italy. Well, good performances from other players. Darko Planinich in the game now. There he is. Solid, if not spectacular. He's a little bit more offensive minded than Miro Bilan, though. So maybe they'll see if they can get him. 
Ukic gets it over to Bogdanovich, who's guarded by Datome. And Bogdanovich gets blocked again by Cuisine. Doesn't even get the shot off. And the fans appreciating it. Watch this. I wouldn't say that was a big time rejection. I'd, I'd be asking what Cuisine was doing, reaching in then. Give the opportunity for the ref to call a exactly. foul. Just don't do it. Make him finish over the top of you. Gentile hands it off to Cuisine, and this time he gets blocked. But a foul called on Hazonia. Croatia just have to keep their heads here. They can't worry about the officials. Well, I think he got him on the yeah. right, right hand or just a little follow through. You no, know, they, they, they. If they get too emotional, Croatia is just going to compound the issues offensively that they've had. So they need to just relax, play with clear heads. In front of the crowd, fire them up. Now, it's nine all. If you're looking at the scoreboard clock on the floor, the home team is actually Croatia. Strange enough. Just to confuse things even more. <laughs> and now Italy have taken a 10-9 lead as the guests, even though they're at home. So you can see Italy leading at 10-9. Spin move. And pass to Babich is able to save it. What a play. Charlotte gets it over to Bogdanovich. No shot clock again. And Charlotte takes a difficult shot. Good play from Melly. Pack it in the open floor. And now Hazania takes it away. He's off to the races. Here he comes, puts it up and in. He said he can be an X factor. Mario Hazania has got the, you know, the great athleticism. But of course, he has an excellent three point stroke as well. So maybe the fouls on Kronoslav Simon won't be an issue for Croatia if he has a big game. Gentile. I tell you, he's been so good getting the ball inside. Yeah, well, Bogdanovic has given him the three. He's now really backing off him. Charlic, and now the foul from uh, Cuisine guarding Planinic. And that is team foul. What is it? Five, so free throws coming. Nice release from Planinich. So Croatia again, the scoreboard clock says home, that's Croatia. They're leading it 12 to 10. They've had a scoreboard uh, breakdown, the men with main one, so they've had to bring in the old clock and put it on the ground. That's five for Croatia. Only guy over 25 years of age is Bogdan Bojan Bogdanovic on the floor. Such a youthful five. Hackett puts up a three. Let's see again, Hezania just standing off him, just daring them to shoot. Croatia did the same thing to, to Greece, just put five guys in the paint. Luka Babic and Hackett's guarding Bogdanovic. And that's a tough call against Bogdanovic. Daniel Hackett just in the in the first game between these two teams Bogdanovich had a great first half Hackett didn't guard him then they put him on him in the second half they tried to go to the low post and Daniel Hackett just did a tremendous job forcing Bogdanovich to catch it on the three-point line that time Bogdanovich had both feet in the paint that's where he draws the foul um, it'll be interesting to see because Daniel Hackett just one-on-one -on -one ability defensively was able to take that threat away in the first game So Croatia, we were wondering what might happen uh, with, with the long delay. And so far, Croatia have come out maybe a little bit better. They lead 15 to 10. The winner of this game qualifies for the Olympics. Datome 
Puts it up. It's good. Tough shot, they told me. And that, that spot, that three spot then. First it was Gentile, now Datomi pouring in the points. And Italy have got very little from Gallinari and um, Bellinelli as well, both of them scoreless. And Bargnani. Yeah. Planinic inside is denied by Marco Cuisine. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Cuisine's come out and become like the Terminator. They've got the Bellinator, but he's on the bench. <laughs> No shot clock again for Croatia. They haven't had great looks from this type of situation this game so far. Oh, great switch in D. Oh, kick the ball though, I didn't see that. So they're going to put 14 now. That's the shot. The, yep, nice touch from him. And yeah, great work. And, and that's where Dario Saric just plays above his years. So Italy switched the previous possession on the out of bounds and nearly got a five second violation. Look at him just sneak to the inside, have Nicolo Melli on his back because Melli was waiting for the switch or waiting for the screen that he would then switch. It's plays like that where Dario Sarri just, you know, never fails to impress. So Shradic goes to the line. Croatia fans, this should be a little bit more excited. Their team's really come out looking good. First points for Saric. Interesting. He's not forcing it. Uh, but, and, it and now this is the lineup for Italy where Gentile goes to the point. Mizon just picked him up. No one's really worked Italy. Up the floor too much when they go to this kind of lineup without a point guard. Gentile gets inside, passes back out to Bellinelli, pump fake over to Datome. And Datome misses another jumper. So the final minute of the opening quarter, uh, a quarter that was delayed for about 20 minutes with a scoreboard malfunction, Sharic. Puts it up and good job. Melly and Naradori on the boards. Bellinelli. Oh, now that triggers a break for Babic. Quickly he gives it to Bogdanovic. And Bellinelli is really struggling. Oh, brilliant recognition from Babic in transition, though. Knew that had that slight advantage, just went through the gears. And I thought he was going to pull it out, but knew he could get an easy shot. See if Italy can get Bellinelli going here. Well, Gentile's got it now. He puts up a jumper. And Croatia might have enough time to launch one. Bogdanovic puts it up. Oh, it came close. And I'd say uh, Croatia will settle for that start. They lead 19 to 12 at the end of the first quarter over Italy. Oh, the percentages tell a story. 0 for 3 for Italy. And what Croatia have done is dared them to shoot from the perimeter. So, um, you know, the same thing happened to Greece. Bellinelli took a couple of early ones, didn't he? And then from that point, Croatia stepped further and further off. You dare you to shoot them. If Bellinelli gets going, they'll have to change the strategy. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if Italy runs something for him early in this second quarter. See if they can hit a three or two behind Bellinelli. And also Gallinari. I, I think... If you're telling Italy, they're in the first quarter, Bargiani, Gallinari, and uh, Bellinelli will be scoreless. I'm pretty sure that they, they know that they'll be down at that stage in the game.
So Italy have led by one point right now it's Croatia on top by seven their biggest lead of the game. So it's Eradori, Meli, Gentile, Datome, and Bellinelli on the floor for Italy. Babic, Sharic, Planinic, Bogdanovic, and Hazonia in the game for Croatia. Simon on the, on the uh, bench with three fouls for Croatia, so Hazonia's come in for him. Datome for three. And Hazonia threw it off of Gentile. Ball goes out of bounds. And another three point attempt. Another three point attempt and another heavy play by a Croatian youngster. Is on you chasing it down. All he did was just bat it back right off again too late. Couldn't handle it and possession back for Croatia here. It looks like, and inside it goes to Platinic and he's fouled. And it looks like the scoreboards are back on. Yeah, well, that time. Bellinelli tried the acting that got him the offensive foul in the first quarter. Watch, dives out of the way, doesn't get the call, and this time it just leaves Planinich wide open. Datomi comes across and tries to foul him, but only gives up a three-point play. And this is a, a dangerous time for Italy here, because if they go down at the half or in this second quarter, the crowd will start to get tense. They'll start to, you know, you'll feel the atmosphere here in the arena. Well, it's a 10 point lead for Croatia. And it's silent in here. And we didn't see Italy really no. pull away from Mexico yesterday no. until the second half. No. Now the crowd is uh, trying to get behind them. Here's Bellinelli. Hands it off to Datome on the baseline. That's good. Yeah, Datome looks confident. He hasn't played well in the tournament. I mean, he had his, his uh, tournament high in the last game against Mexico. That was only nine. Uh, MVP of the Turkish League this season or the playoffs. We need him. Bogdanovic steps back, puts it up. I think Italy will live with that shot. Yeah, great D from Italy. That's the way to get yourselves back into the game, play defense like that. Bellinelli for three! There he is! Uh, the masked man, Marco Bellinelli. That's it, isn't it? If Bellinelli can start to find that range, it just changes the way Croatia have to play defense. Pajanya dribbles over to the left, puts up a three, short, and Datomi collects it. And we're going to see Petrovic get a timeout. Yeah, not a good shot from Croatia, not a good offense. Oh, Gentile may have pushed off there, but no, they're going to call the foul on Bogdanovic or Planinic. Babic, Babic. Babic. Yeah. Or Hazonia. Luka Babic, first foul. So Gentile continues to be a factor. Chance of Italia, Italia here in the Paralimpico. And the hesitation, I'm not sure what was going on there. Melly wasn't ready to catch it. Now inside the Planet spins, gets inside, goes oh, up strong. It's an incredible finish from Planinich. I said he has a little more offense than Bilan, but didn't know he had moves and finishes like that. That was good footwork. Yeah. Look at that, seven points for him. What production. Interestingly, he didn't start tonight. He started the last time these teams played. He's the, he's the tight leading scorer in the game. Planinich. An offensive foul called against Italy. Finish. Look at this. And he's a big, strong body. Yeah. So Gentile comes out. Small lineup on the floor for Italy here. Yeah, Barnard is going to come back in. You can see him yeah. taking off his warm up. Seven on the shot clock. 
And offensive foul. And Sarri's tried to sneak into the post because he had the mismatch against Adodoro. Just hooked, hooked him with the right arm. You watch here, here's the right arm. Just got, oh, left arm, sorry, just goes around his shoulder. Good work from the officials, the right idea. So Italy now, they're still small though. Marchiani, the only recognized big than four guards around him. Croatia will have to guard the three point line now. Hackett though explodes into the lane. Over to Bargnani. And Hazania. This one he's got to make here. Yeah, the extra pass. Aradore was open. Crowd wanted to travel. Bogdanovic for three. And Hazania got an inadvertent hand in the face. And now Babic goes up, misses. Gracia rebound. Planic gets it over to Babic. Bogdanovic gets down low, drives in, and draws the foul. Two shots. It's just, you know, playing under pressure from Croatia. Bogdanovic gets it, eight on the shot clock. And it's the right call. Hackett didn't have their arms up the whole time. They came forward. You know, but Bogdanovic got it with eight seconds on the clock, just held it. So everybody calm down. Let's not panic yet. Gets himself to the line. Rebounding battle you'd have given automatically to Italy with the size that they have through multiple positions, but it's 15 to 10. Right now, four offensive rebounds for Croatia. Gallinari going to come back in the game. The next uh, opportunity. So the free throws take it, increase the lead to nine. With six and a half minutes to go in the first half. I think Italy need Gallinari to get going. See what they do with it. Uh, Saric though, just doing a good job again. Bellinelli wide open. This is badly. It's interesting, Gallinari comes back now. Six and a half minutes to go, he's got the two fouls. So him, Bargiani on the floor, they've got two. Hackett's on the floor, he's got two as well. So any fouls for Italy really are gonna be bad news. Planning it behind the line, that's good. Well, I guess he's uh, officially the X Factor now. He's got nine points, and that forces a timeout from Italy. And just everything working. So, like I said, you, you, you couldn't have paid money to get a bet that Planinich would be the leading scorer with nine points halfway through the second period, and Gallinari Bargiani would be scoreless, and Bellinelli would only have three. I mean, it's just, uh, it's an incredible game so far, but a long way to go. Yeah, long way to go. Croatia, a perfect 10 of 10 at the free throw line. But the big thing for me, they've got 11 points off the bench. Now, a lot of them have come from Planinic, but we've repeatedly said they need the, you know, the, the extra scorer, and they've started to get it. You saw that one of six number there for Italy from three-point range. And Bellinelli's... Uh, just not in sync tonight offensively. Uh, he's one of three. So coming out of the timeout, and the clocks haven't started. No, they had. They started late, <laughs> strangely. Anyway. Bargnani left open. That's good. Italy have got those good mid-range shooters. Maybe that's the game. Rather than take the three, just step inside. Those long twos. Bellinelli out on Hazania. 
Hackett. Again, the low for Bogdanovic. And Bogdanovic went right at Bargnani, just missed the shot. Hackett into Bargnani. Ah, stays out. Groans from the crowd. It went down and bounced back out, didn't it? You just can't get a run go in Italy. Can't get any rhythm offensively. Hazonia open, but a foul called on Planinic. Trying to clear out some space. That's Bargnani hitting his jumper earlier. Bogdanovic is going to go out for Croatia. So often they've got deep in the shot clock and he's been the one that's had to create the offense for them. Where do they go without him on the floor? Maybe this is Italy's turn for the run. Bellinelli. Bargnani. And Datomi flies in for the rebound. I've got to get Gala Gallinari going here. Gallinari! Yeah. Well, he uh, must have heard you. He gives, running back, he gives it the... Come on, make some noise to the crowd as well. Looks like Croatia go to Saric then without Ogdanovic on the floor. Good work from Bellinelli. Saric hemmed in by Bellinelli, oh, then he loses smart. it out of bounds. And Gallinari playing some D. Watch this. Here he was uh, the last trip down, Gallinari. I mean, he, he puts up a lot of shots with Denver, doesn't he? And Italy need him to have that same type of impact tonight. And now the turnover. Gallinari and Bellinelli playing good deal on Shardage. So timeout, Croatia, they lead it 28 to 21. Well, this is the opportunity for Italy, I think. The crowd really want to get behind them. They're, they're really keen to start making some noise, inspire a run. Two points from turnovers, six for Croatia. Might, might grow here for Italy if they can get a score. I think design something for Gallinari. You know, he's just scored. They got the stop. See if they can get him going again. Some confidence. Sarah just played all 15 minutes. Hasn't come out yet. So Planet, it's the uh, surprise, the pleasant surprise for Croatia tonight. He's got nine points. He's back in the game. With Sharic, Hazonia, Roko Ukic guarding uh, Bellinelli, and Luka Babic. There's Bellinelli, and Ukic reaches in and commits the foul. Bogdanovich comes back. I mean, he's the player you got to have on the floor, don't you? They just look so much better. So Charlotte, though, is going to come out of the game. And he's going to go to Gallinari. So, again, another reason to go to Gallinari. See if we can get him in the post, maybe. Yeah, here he goes. Slide straight in. Good play for so now he's Now he's got Babich on him. He's going to try to back him up. Turns, hands it off to Barnetti for the two handed flush. Then keep going to Gallinari if Croatia stay with this lineup. The jeers coming down here inside the Paralympico for Croatia. Ukic over to Babic. Hezonja for three. Off the back of the rim. Now Gallinari. Inside. Well, they've got Bargnani posting up. And he just missed the shot. He's got to do a better job finishing. Bargnani's oh, taken a lot of shots in this period in the second quarter. There's two of six now. 
is one of the makes and comes out. So Bargnani has to take a seat. Three fouls late in the first half. Bogdanovich goes baseline. And he was fouled as he attacked the rim. He is absolutely fearless driving to the basket. And Gallinari now has picked up his third foul. Boy, this is a a nightmarish couple. Or was it Melly? Nightmarish sequence. Melly caught him on the head. Yeah, Nicolo Melly got the foul. That's his All right. third. Well, yeah. they, they signaled him. But you're right. Yeah, Melly. So either way. Yeah. So now it's uh, Melly comes out yeah. and Cuisine has to come back in. So the fouls have become a factor. Yeah. Bogdanovic, though, he, he drove the baseline. And from, from my angle, he, he just disappeared into three Italian defenders. And all of a sudden, he just come out of the top of them. You know, tremendous drive. Like you uh, used the word fearless. He absolutely is going to the basket. So creative in his ability to get away from traffic, you know, avoid the shot block, yet still get a high quality shot. That is the first free throw miss today by Croatia. Now they're 10 of 11. And that was his first miss. Five of six, now six of seven. Gallinari catches it, shoots, and scores. He's starting to put up some numbers. Yeah, they, and they need him. I think they could keep going to him through this second quarter now. In fact, he's only got four points. Yeah. Seems like he has more. Here's Bogdanovich again, and blocked from behind. And kind of a late whistle from the right corner. I mean, I can't see what the fuss is. Why Italy are... Uh, even thinking of going in on that. Bogdanovic clearly got fouled for me on the drive. So once again, Bogdanovic will go to the line. Two fouls now on Cuisine. So I'm seeing to go out and talk to Cuisine about how he wanted him to defend. Yeah, well, he got switched on to Bogdanovic, so it's, it's this tactic. Well, how Cuisine's got to play him. He's going to give up a shot to Bogdanovic. It's what shot he gives up or what drive he gives up. That's what Messina will be talking to him about. And Bogdanovic right now probably the MVP of the tournament, the way things are going. Those are his... Uh, Tournament numbers at the line, see 83%. So good free throw shooter. Now Croatia 13 of 14 at the line. Back to a six point lead. Long way to go. And the quick pass inside. Beautiful play, beautiful finish from Dathome. Yeah, it was great curl cut. That's like Alinari post option again for Italy that's working so well. Now Cuisine guarding Bogdanovich. And Bogdanovich just lost it. He had the step as well. You know, he was past his man. He apologizes to the bench, but he, he was going to get to the ring if he hadn't have lost that one. And for all the way that Croatia played and dominated this first half, Italy are right there now, aren't they? Chance to make it a two-point game. Hackett being guarded by Hazania, just like Petrovic said would be the case. Again, Gallinari, low post. He's got Bogdanovic on him. Now a little bit of help with Hazania, so that leaves Hackett wide open for three. Go! And with that shot, Italy have closed the gap to just one. Gallinari right. hasn't really scored in the last couple of offense, but it's been all about him. Shotic has an answer. Yes, he does. And he put the gun back in the holster after that. Messina <laughs> is not a happy man. Such a good player. Now, 
to Italy. Have an answer this time. Gallinari inside. Can't get it to go. How big was that shot from Shardich? Yeah, just He just silenced the crowd, didn't he? They were so, they were so uh, enthusiastic after the previous score. He's fallen. Shardich has five points and ten rebounds. And we've still got time here in the first half. Oh, the reach, and Bellinelli almost comes up with a steal. So only six seconds on the shot clock. Watch this. Shardich just does so many things well. And Hackett, that was his before. So timeout on the floor, one minute remaining in the first half. Offensive started to come to life for both teams, isn't it, really? You know, the, the low post play of Gallinari has ignited the Italian offense. When he isn't scoring, he's been able to kick out to people for, for easy shots or rhythm shots. And then Croatia, Saric has been quiet. He gets to score. Bogdanovic, just, I mean, he's just immense, isn't he? Every time he's set foot on the floor, 12 points. Is that every game they scored double figures in, at least in the first half? Points in the paint, 5 of 11 for each team. I would say it's been quite as physical as I expected it to be in the in in the lane as it was the other night. Still got a long way to go. That was the yeah. second half when it got really kind of um, yeah they got after each other a lot and we've had a lot of fouls as well. So the foul count has meant the players couldn't get physical for the risk of picking up a third. Speaking of which, you'll be interested in Gallinari, Kusin and Hackett on the floor with two fouls for Italy. Ukic on the floor for two fouls for Croatia. See if any of them will come out for the final minute. But Bargnani and Melli already on the bench for Italy with three fouls and Simon on the on the bench with three fouls for Croatia. Of course, Bargnani and Simon picked up technical fouls. Boy, a lot of uh, anticipation, a lot of anxiety here inside this arena, just looking around at all these Italian fans. Now Hazonia goes right at it and gets swatted. The foul. Oh. Foul called on Croatia going back up on Ukic, and he's picked up his third foul. Yeah. I thought that was a good block. Was it Datome who went up? Watch this. Hazonia goes strong. And it was indeed Datome. Now Hazonia wanted a foul, but that was a perfect block, unless know. there was some body. I don't know whether it was a foul before, though, when he was driving. I thought I heard a whistle early there. With Kusin more Quite than a reach. More, yeah, more than with Datomi. But then they called the foul Ukic. It looked like maybe he got all ball. Mm. But anyway. So Bellinelli wearing that mask to protect his broken cheekbone. I know Charlotte Hornets fans uh, will be excited about him coming over to the Queen City to play for Michael Jordan's club. And he'll be a teammate of Nicolas Batum of France. That's interesting. There you see his tournament numbers and what he's done today. So Hackett comes back out of the game and is replaced by Gentile. So Hackett has the two personal fouls, so that's a good move by Messina probably. Yeah, no point in picking up a third here. Bogdanovich for another three. And it's just such a difficult shot as well. Players usually like to catch and shoot within rhythm. I mean, it's not a Rapovich has scored. It's Bogdanovich yet again. And the bounce pass too hard off the ground. Now up ahead to Bogdanovich. Another one. And just like that, Bogdanovich has stretched the lead to seven points for Croatia. Boy, he can strike quick. Bounce pass to Bellinelli, and he goes up and scores right at the end of the half. So something to build on, perhaps, for Italy to go to the break. But they trail by five points in, in a game that's had a lot of uh, twists and turns. But look at Bogdanovich. He stroked the three, and then off the turnover, he goes down and gets the fast break. 39-34 Croatia on top at halftime. Well, Lloyd, I mean, these numbers, uh, 
Italy struggling a bit from three point range. Croatia getting a lot at the free throw line. They're out rebounding Italy. And Italy has has a few blocks we've seen with Cuisine coming in off the bench and Bogdanovich once again uh, with 17 points and, and Charlotte's just doing everything with five points 10 rebounds. Yeah, I mean you run out of words to say about those two and how how good they've been how much of an influence they've had on the game. I, I, I'll say this. I think feel like Croatia might go into halftime being more disappointed than Italy right now. You know, Croatia had their seven point lead. They had a chance it, you know, the little run at the end of a the half there. They had all the momentum and just that last score from Italy has given them some sort of hope going into the second half. So 39 34 it's Croatia on top of Italy at halftime. Stick around. We'll be right back for the final 20 minutes. The winner of this game qualifies for the Rio Olympics.
Well, Italy returning to the court here for the halftime warm-ups. Got about two minutes and 49 seconds to get back into their rhythm here. Croatia as well. Croatia leading it 39-34. And that man, Bojan Bogdanovic, has once again uh, taken center stage for Alexander Petrovic's uh, Croatia with 17 points. And Dario Saric as well has been solid uh, 10 rebounds to go with his five points. And of course, uh, Darko Planinic came out and really gave him a lift with nine points. This was a, a first half that had about a 20 minute delay, about three and a half minutes into the game when the scoreboard malfunctioned. And uh, now it appears both scoreboards are working and they've removed the scoreboard that was on the floor. So let's just hope and pray that we don't have any issues because uh, I've got to leave the hotel at 545 for my flight. <laughs> I'm not suggesting it's going to go that late, but uh, I like basketball like anybody else. I don't mind seeing a couple extra overtimes, but we do need to finish this at some point. D Danilo Gallinari, he came out and started playing better in the second quarter, and they're going to need him to really step up. Bellinelli just hasn't been uh, as effective tonight, although he does now have seven points. Made some mistakes early on, two of six. I suppose, Lloyd, really, it's, I mean, obviously no time to panic if you're Italy, but it just seems like they're continuously playing from behind. They've got some a little bit of foul trouble, uh, just haven't been in sync. They had the delay, and it's just been, a, it was a frustrating opening 20 minutes for Italy for the most part. I have to say, it's very much like the first time these two teams played at that time. That, that first game was 35-33 to Croatia at the half, and, and it was a very similar first 20 minutes for Italy. Croatia came out really hot. They dominated. They led almost throughout. Um, what Italy had was just a great spark in the third quarter. They had 21 points in that quarter alone. Really did just kind of break the game open um, in the third period. So they're going to need to do something similar or at least you know, they don't have to have a 21 to 12 quarter and, and take a the commanding lead, lead into the fourth to win the game. But they've got to play better in this third period, I think. You know, try and get the offense clicking a little bit better, like you said. They need to shoot better from beyond the three-point line, I think, because the way Croatia play, they give up the three-point shot to you. They let you take it whenever you want. They dare you to make them. So if you're going to be dared to make them, you, you've got to make the other team pay. Well, welcome back to the Paralympico. Krunoslav Simon starting here for Croatia, who lead by five points. He's got the three fouls being guarded by Marco Bellinelli. Hazonia also out there with Bogdanovic. Miro Bilan back out, as well as uh, Sharic. Now Bilan going straight at, and Datomi comes over and helps out Bargnani. And uh, Gallinari gets the last touch. It goes out of bounds. But that was a promising start for Italy defensively. Yep. Well, the offense is often created from the defense. So this matchup again is going to be key. Uh, Bogdanovic, uh, turnaround jumper. So that's better for Italy. Yeah, Hackett did a good job again, made him catch it further away, <laughs> gave um, Gallinari the opportunity to come across and challenge the shot. Here's Bellinelli, tried to bank it in. Yeah, Bank's not open. I think you have the opportunity to, to put it on the floor there. Settled for the jump shot. Simon gets it to Sharic. Faces a little bit of a double team. They don't want Simon to get off. There he is. He puts up a three. And he made that shot in the first half, but he misses it now. Gallinelli goes down, gets back up. And Gallinari almost had it knocked away by Shadic. Gallinari drives in, puts it up and in. And Gallo has a chance for a three-point play. We've been waiting to see this all tournament long. Another of those occasions. What's the arms? Just a little bit forward right there for Dario Saric. So close 
to be in great defense, but instead it's just a really soft touch. So a soft foul to Gallinari. You know, he's, he has now really started to be a major influence on this game, hasn't he? From Italy behind, he's come with those six points now, three assists as well. So the foul was on Charlotte, his second. And Gallinari cuts it to a two-point Croatia lead. Crowd booing Croatia. Here's Šarić. He's done some damage from that spot right there in this tournament, but he passes it back out to Bogdanovic. Bilan comes to set a pick, and Bogdanovic goes the other way. One on the shot clock, and Hazania has to put up a three. And good job again by Italy and Gallinari with the rebound. No, the defense is getting the crowd into it. They love the effort. Datome puts it up and banks it in. He shot very well tonight. Yeah, Hazonia went for the still missed and all that did was just give a wide open shot to Datome. He's been a different player tonight, Datome. Yeah, yeah, seems to enjoy coming off the bench. Simone, his pass tapped by an Italian. Crowd is into this one now. They're up every occasion. Shot it over on the baseline. That's an air ball. Gallinari again was right in his grill. And Gallinari goes up and lays it up and in and draws the foul. Italy has taken the lead. Oh, Daniela Gallinari. I mean, as much as we talk about Bogdanovic and the impact that he has, what about Gallinari? When they struggled in the first quarter, he was on the bench. He's come off the bench now. I mean, just everything offensively going through him. 41-39, Italy on top. Look at that. Croatia called timeout. Danilo Gallinari has brought the crowd to its feet here in the third quarter. Italy have stormed into the lead. The winner of this game qualifies for the Olympics. The loser goes home. Gallinari now with 10 points. Where did Croatia go for offense? Trouble is, it's only Bogdanovic, really. Saric hasn't got going. Only five points for him. And a foul called on Italy. Is that Hackett? And that's number three on him. Yeah, and that shows you how much attention is on Bogdanovic right now. Look at Sandro Gamba there, the former Italy coach, and the silver hair there looking on. This is the, it's not just the main event, it's the only event in Italy tonight. Hazania from the left. And Gallinari, once again, He's got the wind in his sails right now. Every shot a little force from Croatia because the shot clock is so deep. That's the Italian defense that's doing that. Hackett passes it back outside to Bellinelli. Bellinelli back out to Gallinari. Open Hackett. That's going to be short. Simon now gets it to Bogdanovic. Gets in the lane. Hackett has the three fouls. And the ball touches off Miro Bilan. He can't control it. Much better defense from Italy. Yeah, Italian defense has gone about two levels higher than it was in the first half. Wasn't bad then, but it's an 8-0 start in this third quarter. This is almost a replica 
of that first game between these two teams. Third period just belonging to Italy so far. Gallinari backs up Bogdanovic, gets in the lane, tried to get a foul now off to the races. Three on two break. And Simone pulls up. He nails it, the three, and that knocks it at 42. Croatia have been very good in transition. Think of all the opportunities they've had. Whenever they've run, they've got good quality out of it. Bounce pass to Gallinari, and that's the second time he drives in, a little bit perhaps out of control. Gets it back. He's going to put up a three. I think he's feel he was feeling it. He's very confident. Not the best shot because of that. Now Croatia with a chance to go back in front. Hackett trying to be posted up by Sharks, but he's too strong, and he throws it right in the hands of Bellinelli. Here comes the masked man, and he puts it up and in. Defense of Daniel Hackett on the low post, incredible. It's not the biggest, you know, but he's just forced Ario Saric into a turnover. And that is an accomplishment because yeah. Shadish doesn't make many mistakes, but a foul called. Here it is. This was the play by the good defense, which led to the break for Bellinelli. So Bellinelli just picks up his uh, foul, his first foul. 15 points off turnovers for Italy. Croatia have only turned it over 10 times. They've been punished whenever they have. And Hackett is picked up. His fourth foul, oh. he's going to have to come out of the game. That's a blow. Oh, it's a huge blow for Italy. Huge. So Gentile goes over, but two quick fouls on Daniel Hackett. Sends uh, the former Southern California star to the bench. Spent this past season in Olympiacos in Greece. Simon, his favorite spot, and he hits another three. Back to back threes. Oh, two Boy, he is streaky. Oh, two in a hurry from him. He's got 12 points. Simon, he's only played a few minutes. He's only played 10 minutes because of the foul trouble as well. Datome. Finds his way in. And tough shot. Rebound Planinic. Nobody on the glass for Italy. It's okay being spread if you're Bargiani, but he's got a rebound. I think that's why Melli's going to come in now. And Gallinari reaches in and takes it away. He looks up the floor to Bellinelli. Bargiani at the line. And again, he, you know, Bargani shoots with this spread lineup for Italy. Uh, Tomi tried, but Croatia being very good rebounding the ball. Bogdanovic now back over to Babic. They got to find Simon, surely. Look at how spread the offense is for Croatia. Ukic. Way, way outside the three point line. And offensive foul, Ukic. I think that's four. Nice no, planning it. Oh, planning setting yeah. the pick. Yeah. This second. Watch. Yep. So, Gallinari and Bargnani out, Cuisine and Melli in for Italy. They got to keep up the defensive intensity. Surely Gallinari won't stay out that long. Oh, pass to Cuisine. Nice play. Now back to Cuisine. Seven on the shot clock. Oh, Cuisine throws it right into the hands of Ukic. Ukic lays it up and in. Again, clinical from Croatia in transition. Kuzin tried to be a provider. Probably he should have gone one on one. In the low block. They're not going to double him. They're just going to wait for him to pass it out. See if he can beat them. And it's going to be Mele for three. And Datome. Oh, Datome just got an elbow. Quickly to the other end is Ukic. Bellinelli trapped, gets it back, and puts up a tough shot. 
And Italy's just out of sync. Yeah, they're trying to force it. They're trying to make the great play. You just need to relax. The gr great plays will be there. Look, this is, look at the room Cassini's got. I'm not sure where he's trying to throw that pass. He's trying to get it into Bellinelli, try and get the, you know, the home run, the superstar play. They don't need to do that. Remember, Croatia blew a 24-point lead yesterday against Greece, but then had a strong finish to the game. Now they s seem to have weathered the storm a little bit. They're back up by three. A chance to go back up even more. Simon open. Barry's another one. He's got 15. I mean, they got to get that defense right against Simon. It, it's planning. It's rolling to the basket. And because he finished so well in the first half, I think Italy are worried about him getting free. So that's why Simon's got more room. Cuisine gets it to Melly, and he goes up and dunks. And a chance for a three-point play, boy. Uh, Bogdanovich is frustrated for himself. This is a huge breakdown. Watch him on the far side of the floor. Look, just let Melly sneak inside, and not only that, it's a second down one that Bogdanovich has given away now. But they've got to find Simon at the other end. Yeah, well, Bellinelli is hearing it in the ear from Coach Messina about the way he's getting back after the screen, back to... Simon, so Coach Messina wants him to get back quicker to challenge that shot. Simon, five three-pointers in the game, five of seven. Here he is again. Same play. Cross, yeah. oh, this time he throws it into the hands of Bellinelli. They've got numbers here. Simon's slow to get up. Aradori. Well, Melly trying to get it, thinks he could take uh, Babich and Bellinelli back to Aradori. Aradori takes a shot, gets it blocked, and then it goes out of bounds off of Italy. Boy, Italy just could not get what they wanted there. Passed up a couple of things. They've lost their kind of um, the way of playing without Gallinari on the floor. They don't really know where to go for the shot. Kusin keeps getting it and having touches on the inside. Well, he's not an effective scorer. The Tome and Tonu are going to come in for Italy. Simon goes up, tough shot, planage there, offensive rebound, puts it up and in. And then he gives us the muscles, the guns. Planage, I've said before, he's got to be perfect in games. You know, perfect in his finishing around the basket, and he's been ex almost almost perfect in this game here. Bellinelli to Cuisine. He's not going to pass that up. And Melly there with the rebound. Goes up and in. I think Melly's getting to the point where really he could start doing some damage on the low blocks. Yeah, I wonder if they'll go with Melly and... Um and bring Gallinari in for Cuisine, goes slightly smaller. Bogdanovich for three, and the rebound falls to Babich. Now Bogdanovich again, charges in, gets it out to Simon, and he's fouled by Bellinelli. Good rotation from Bellinelli, just couldn't quite stop short enough, could he? Not in the bonus yet. This was uh, Melly. Looks like it might be an option. Try to get him to post up. Cuisine comes out. So Tonu and Datomi back in for the final 35 seconds of the quarter. Saric has got Datomi guarding him. He'll set down screen for Rukic. In. Yeah, see if they go to him straight away in that low block. Lukic goes around Tonut, and that was a mismatch from the beginning. I mean, he just went right past him. Uh, Tonut's fresh off the bench. They just went right at him. He couldn't foul. And for, uh, both teams will be in the bonus. The final 12 seconds of the third quarter. Tatome for three. Good. He's really got a confident stroke tonight. And Babic, Ukic gets it off in time, but it was short. Tatome, with that three-pointer, has now got 11 points. That's a team high. 
Look at that. He's definitely feeling it tonight. But right now it's Croatia leading by two. Ten minutes remaining. The winner goes to the Olympics. This was Ukic's shot when he went past uh, Tonu. Oh, what a fourth quarter we're going to have, eh? So five of those threes for Croatia made by Krunoslav Simon. Yeah. 31 rebounds uh, for Croatia, 21 for Italy. And again, the X factor planning it offensively for what he's brought tonight. I mean, he didn't even start. If you look, we've said about Croatia having those three scorers. I didn't really expect uh, Planinic and Krunoslav Simon to be two of the three, really. Well, uh, Sharadish could yeah. still put up some numbers tonight, but he's still got five points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Saric has played well, but he, he hasn't got going offensively. Gallinari came out, and, and ever since that point, Italy just didn't know the, the focal point of their offense. Without Bellinelli hitting um, and the threat that he has, it was um, very indecisive, I should say, from Italy. I think Gallinari is going to have to come back. And like I said, I think their best five might be with Gallinari and Melli on the floor at the same time. Uh, try and post up both of those guys. Or use the pick and roll with Gallinari rolling down um, to the ring. You know, interesting, Bogdanovich didn't score in the third quarter. He had 17 at halftime. But that man right there did Simon. The fourth quarter action now underway here in the Paralympico. It's Croatia leading by two against Italy. Remember Daniel Hackett has uh, the four fouls. He's on the bench for Italy. Gallinari back out there. Here's the Tome. He just hit the three. Gallinari five on the cl shot clock and misses badly. So Croatia the two point lead Italy need to get it done with their defense. This is the stretch for Croatia, uh, Italy to spurt though without Bogdanovic on the floor. That man Simon again this time well short. And the referee tells the guys to come over and get the moisture up where Gentile fell. Canari looking for an opening. Who's he going to pass it to? Is he going to go to the basket? Ooh. And Melly is there for the offensive rebound. He's really giving him a presence. Yeah, I, I think just Melly's a better scorer on the inside. He gives up size. But when Planinich tries to hedge out and rebound uh, on this pick and roll, Melly will finish going to the ring better than Cuisine. Oh. We're all nodding. 54 each. And Planinich goes oh. in and gets blocked by Melly. Now, and a technical foul called on. Alexander Petrovic, because he was complaining, he felt like there was goal interference, but I thought it was a good block. Yeah. Watch this. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was. Uh, yeah, it well, was off the backboard, wasn't it? At first look, I, I thought it was absolutely a clean block. But um, maybe it wasn't as... Clear cut as I first thought. Well, Dutomi takes advantage this time. Petrovic is trying to tell him that his uh, assistants have looked at it on replay and had it confirmed that it was goal interference. And the referee just told him to sit down. Well, they should just going to make, you know, calm their heads again now. Bad call or not. It's uh, eight minutes to go, eight and a half Absolutely. minutes. Absolutely. Yeah. Now Aradori back out to Gallinari. It's online and it doesn't go in. And it goes off Aradori back over to Croatia. Great work from Babic in there. You know, the other guys boxed out. Planinic did a good job holding people off. Babic just went and got it for his team. Croatia just trying to fight minutes or... or 
you know, get still minutes while Bogdanovic is on the bench, really. Here he comes now. And Sharks gets inside. Oh. Foul called on Datome. Yeah, Datome slipped. He had to rush back to get into the play. From that moment on, he knew Saric had the advantage. And that's why he just went and fouled him. Didn't give him the score. So that's smart. And here comes Bogdanovic. So they got about two, three minutes of him on the bench. Pazonia also coming in for Luka Babic. I'll tell you, Petrovic is just egging the referee. He's not doing himself any favors here. Yeah. He needs to worry about coaching. He's got to make the calls for his team. He's almost a distraction for his team, right? You know, Sharch is at the line. Sharch with just five points. Now six. So that ties it at 55. Less than eight minutes remaining. Chintile fades back, misses. Charlotte with the rebound. Looks like Bellinelli got up and almost checked himself into the game again. He's coming up. He was like, I'm going in. And Melly going for the steal there. Ukic inside and another foul called on Datome battling Sharic. That's the second foul on Italy here in the quarter. Three fouls now Datome. It's interesting twice Saric has managed to isolate Datome in the low block. Gallinari's guarding Bogdanovic on that. I'm not sure if it was a switch. And that was in favor of Croatia. Italy then Aradori comes out, they'll get a bit bigger. Perhaps Bellinelli coming in. They get it to Ukic, the veteran, the one that the Croatian that played at the Olympics eight years ago. And also at the Olympic qualifying tournament. Here it is, the Sharic inside. And they're going to count it. So a three point play opportunity for Sharic. Beautiful slip and pass. I mean, watch this from Saric. Hazonia put a pass on the money. Saric went to like he was going to set the screen and just cut right to the basket, lost Gallinari. Oh, it's just, again, two young players making very heady moves. There's four fouls on Melli, so he has to come out now. And the fouls are hurting Italy, how they would love to have Melli and Hackett on the floor right now, I would think. So Sharch back at the line. And he's getting close to double-double territory again. And he makes it, so he now has nine points, 11 rebounds. And Daniel Hackett has to look on from the bench. Good time for Bellinelli to hit a three, get the crowd into it again. Gallinari's going to take a three, and that's going to be short. Nothing Croatia will live there. Gallinari's being guarded by Planinic. He'll settle for the three-point shot. Planinic would struggle to keep him in front. That's where Gallinari has to, you know, force the ball going to the basket, either get there and finish himself or create for somebody else off the, uh, the kick out. Italy just three three-pointers. Croatia have the seven, and inside the arc, uh, Italy better. Shows you a lot, doesn't it? You're shooting 45% inside, but only 23% outside. Surely you should know where to be taking the ball rather than settle for those threes. Well, what does it say about Croatia, though? I mean, they, they seem to have kind of... Uh, grown up a little bit in this tournament. I mean, the, the, the most impressive thing for me is the fact that they lost that opening game, uh, but they've been able to rebound from that, come back and beat Greece, especially. And, okay, they've struggled 
you know they built the lead tonight they lost it and now they've come back and taken the lead again so they're really proving to be quite resilient and some of those other characters in that team may be a little bit better than we give them credit for you know we talk so much about Sharich and Bogdanovich but Simon's come out and played tonight Planinich uh, yeah you know he's the other guy 11 points from him when he, they can get production out of that five spot that they have from him tonight it changes it, it just makes him so much more so much much more versatile because he can score on the inside he draws people to him frees up more space on the perimeter for everyone else Saric is going to isolate against Bargani here and is he going to get some help nope he's just going to score well, look at the difference so it's four on five, four position against five position at one end Gallinari settles for the three at the other end Saric goes right at the man and gets the easy layup well not, not easy but gets a layup Gallinari has to beat Bogdanovich, and Bogdanovich commits the foul. Three fouls on him. Here it is again, Sharic goes right past Bargnani. Gentile ooh, Travel. travels. This is where Hackett, you know, is so good with the post game. Ability to use his strength and get to the basket and defensively as well. Even though Bogdanovich hasn't scored in this second half. And Ryan Q Hackett walks up a little bit early, I think. Bogdanovich from the right. That was short. And nobody was able to get the rebound. Now in the corner, Bogdanovich. He won't miss them all night long here. He's going to make some. It's two on the clock. I don't think they know. And Shardish doesn't get it off in time. So sort of a good defense from Italy, but also a break. A little bit of lapse in concentration for Croatia. So Gentile is going to come back in. Yeah, so a bit, a bit early for Hackett. I think they'd have preferred Another minute, but they need him on the floor. Down five. You just can't pick up a cheap foul. Bellinelli trying to get away from Ukic. And he passes. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll be Idli's ball. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Make sure they pick the right opportunity Italy they don't have to force if it's not there and don't be passive from beyond the three-point line they're looking for Bellinelli Bellinelli throws it away here comes Bogdanovich and they wanted an unsportsmanlike but they're not going to get it I think he was throwing to Bargnani it's because um that Tommy's in in front of the attacking player. So if the foul comes from the side or behind, automatic unsportsmanlike foul. But because he had sprinted back and got in front of Bogdanovic, that means it's just a regular foul. But it is the fourth team foul already against Italy. So any more fouls from them, Croatia will be shooting at the line. And so a long time to go. And they're 88% right now. And inside! Uh, the foul and the three-point play opportunity for Sharic. Well, I said throughout the first half, he hasn't had a great game offensively, but how good has he been? The, just the poise, you know, mentally, his ability to stick with the game, even though, to have that confidence, even though he hasn't played well offensively in the first half and to take over a game like this in the second. I mean, Bogdanovic scoreless in the second half, and Dario Saric has just picked up the slack. Well, Croatia's biggest lead of the game is 11, and they have now gone back in front by seven with a chance to go up by eight. Uh, everything's on the table for Italy now. Hackett's in the game, Melli's in the game, both of those with the four fouls, but you know this is the five they're going to have to go with. This is the five that will produce for them. Italy's players looking on nervously from the bench. Uh, they've got to try and isolate with Melli. High ball screen, maybe. See if they can attack Planinic, or if he hedges Melli roll into the basket.
Five on the shot clock to Tome. He puts up a three. And long rebound. Then they settle and don't make the three. That's Here's Bellinelli going to the basket. And he tries to dunk it and draws the foul from Shardich. And that will be number three on Shardich. It'll be interesting to see a replay on that one. But the reason Sarage picked up a foul is because Bellinelli is so aggressive. Look at this. I, I like that as a play. I think that's a tremendous play from him to attack the ring, not settle for the three as Italy have done. So 4.44 remaining, and it's an eight-point lead for Croatia. Italy trying to get back to the Olympics for the first time since 2004. Croatia for the first time since 2008. And Bellinelli gets it back to a seven-point deficit. Bellinelli might have to uh, be the guy for Italy, win or lose. If they are going to let him shoot, you know, he's the guy that can make them. So, did they run a couple of plays from him, see if he can free himself to make one or two, get the crowd into it again. Six points, the lead. Croatia, four and a half minutes remaining. Hazania, big time for him to be in the game. He's going to put up a three and misses, but Planic with the offensive rebound gets blocked and this time Hackett picks up the ball and he's going to break and he's going to pull it back out and his bounce pass and they go up to Gallinari for the dunk is that questionable shot selection at the other end from Hazania and Bogdanovich reaches down like he's been hurt here's another look at it twisted his ankle a bit but not only has Hazonia shot, also Planinich, the offensive rebound, fresh 14, rather than pull it out, use some time with the lead, he tried to force the shot up, and all that did was gave Italy the opportunity to get out in transition, and then for Italy, what did they do? Took their time, used that um, drag ball screen where Daniel Hackett can get into the lane. If he's able to get into the lane, Daniel Hackett, he often makes good things happen. <coughs> Petrovic brings Hazania out and puts Simon back in. Simon has been hitting his shots tonight, 15 points. He's got the three fouls. Nobody with Croatia on four fouls. Hackett and Datome each with four fouls, as well as Meli for Italy. And they're all in the game. And he goes up. Good defense, great rebound from Planinich, and he puts it up and in. And a foul called as well. Yeah. Against the Tommy. The Tommy. Unbelievable. Oh, that's just great work from Planinich. And what an offensive rebound from him. It was indeed the foul called on the Tome. So Planinich now. 13 points, four. And who's going to do it for Italy? Who's going to be the one that steps up? Well, Sharks with the 14 points, 12 rebounds. Is, uh, those are numbers you just can't ignore. Got Tommy fouled out on that foul as well, so he's gone. And uh, Aladore is in. Rather than Gentile, interesting.
Well, he is definitely the X Factor tonight. Planich coming off the bench, and fortunately for Italy, he misses badly. He'd shot him well before that. But Italy with plenty of time. Three minutes, 45 seconds. Bellinelli, that's online. That's good. That's a three. And just like that, the lead is cut in half. Well, that's a huge three from Bellinelli. Not only for the points, look at the crowd on their feet on that far side. They are going nuts inside the Palo Olimpico. Simo now gets inside, passes back to Shortage for three. Off the front of the rim. Italy needs to play with a calm head. Don't force a three if they don't, you know, if it's not there. That Bellinelli three is really giving this Italy team some hope now. Hackett gets in, puts up the layup and in. It's a one-point game. That's so why Hackett has to be on the floor. Seven points. He's got the four fouls. It's all happening right now here in Turin. This crowd is as loud as it's been all week. Ukic puts up a three. And Planinic comes in, the offensive rebound. Is that Hackett? And I don't think, I think it was on Gallinari. I think it's Hackett. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Gallinari. Was his fourth. Boy, you just cannot say enough about Planinic. So now Gallinari with four fouls. So this is a, a war of attrition for Italy, that's for sure. Planinic, 13 points, five rebounds, but four offensive rebounds for him. Two and a half minutes, 2.33 to go. Planinic has to take it in a very loud arena and misses, as you can hear. This is what you call home court advantage for Italy. It's just getting louder and louder. <laughs> See, he had made his first three. Yeah. Now he's missed his last two. And he breaks the second one. And Gallinari with those long arms goes up and gets the rebound, hands it off to Hackett. Well, that's the home court advantage here in Turin for Italy. Bellinelli puts up a three, that's off. And Gallinari fights for the rebound. It goes back to Italy. It looked like it went off short. Tremendous work from Gallinari there. Yeah. Interesting. Croatia, after planning, it should be played so well offensively rebounding. They're going to go really small here now. Hazonia's in. Maybe they feel slow footed defensively. No, I, I, Get him I, a break just for a minute and put him back out there. Italy's got to go to Meli. He's being guarded by Bogdanovic. Put him in the low block. Well, now Gallinari on the switch against Simon. Sharks is going to be there to help out, though. And, oh, beautiful pass! Meli! Gallinari read it to perfection. Croatia looks like they're getting ready. To get to the finish line, and Italy have stormed back to take the lead. Simon. And a foul called on Gallinari, and he has fouled out of the game. And Gallinari is pointing to his eye to say, I got a finger in the eye. Yeah, the foul was before that, though, wasn't it? Yeah. That's the thing. He put his hands on the man as he was driving. Croatia got to find a way to get Bogdanovic involved in this. He hasn't scored in the second half, but in that offense, he was on the far side, just stood in the corner. That is a major, major sequence. As you look at Gallinari leave the court, you could just feel like he was 
playing his best basketball of the tournament in Italy kind of I mean they need all of those guys out there. Yeah. Do they have enough to get to the finish line. They are now leading by one. And Simon see what kind of uh, blood he's got in his veins. Well, he's a guy that's been there before. Gustav Simon one of the more experienced heads on this Croatian team isn't it. Plays his club basketball in Italy. 30 years of age, he's the oldest guy on the team. So Gallinari takes the seat. He fouls out, and there's his dad looking on. 12 points, eight rebounds for Gallinari, and Simon gets the shooter's roll. Gallinari sitting next to Pepe Poeta. And it's going to be a nervous finish here now. And Simon sinks both. He does have ice running in his veins. Now, Bellinelli really put up a three while they try to get something inside. Melli trying to post up here. And Bellinelli gets in and draws the contact. Smart play from Bellinelli. Put it on the floor. Knew he felt the contact and just kind of jumped into Hazonia. Knew he'd get to the line. Hazonia didn't establish his position. You can see just the right hand was down, and then yeah. Hazonia wasn't straight up either, was it? Brunoslav Simon there just put Croatia back in front. Bellinelli makes the first. He, he's wearing the mask because of the broken cheekbone. I'm sure they like the toughness. Yeah, I mean, he's a very good free throw shooter, Bellinelli. 83% in the NBA season this year. But has he taken uh, many as big as this for Italy? He makes both. So Italy back in front now, 120 remaining. Bogdanovic pulls up and hits it. That's why they've got to go to him. I, I mean, you say about ice water in the veins, that's just so smooth from Bogdanovic there. And Ukic trying to get the foul called on Bellinelli. And Petit, the referee, says, nope, we got to play on. See if they try to get something going to the basket again. No, it's going to be Bellinelli at the line, and he misses. And Bogdanovic has it. Good box out from Ukic. Just held on to Melli. Nobody else from Italy trying to get after it. 46 seconds. Croatia with a one-point lead. Bogdanovic. Eridor, he's got to be careful. He's going to go right past him. He does, and misses the shot. It looked like Melli might tap it in. <laughs> Bellinelli takes the pick. He's going to go hard. He's going to miss it, but Melli is there. Italy scrap. Simon with the rebound. 22.7 seconds, and Italy have to foul. Still plenty of time to go in this one, though. Even if he makes both free throws, it's still going to be a one-possession game. Italy have the chance to hit the three to tie, and 20 seconds is a long time. You see that play there? It looked like... It looked like uh, Messina came running out, telling Bellinelli to pass it over to Hackett. But Bellinelli went to his right when he got the pick. And we've just seen Simon make a couple of free throws. He has a chance now to take it up to a three-point lead. And it rims out. And they could also, if they had gone to about three, of course, they could foul. Croatia still have a foul to give. Well, this is uh, pretty intense stuff. <laughs> Olympic place on the line. 69-68. Simon makes one of two. So, timeout Italy. Well, 
Where do you go if you're Italy? What do you run? Advance the ball. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, Bellinelli's been kind of the go-to guy for them, but... Do you hold it for one? No, I, I, you got to go early just to, to allow yourself to rebound. Well, um, yeah, so you just go... Yeah. I, I, I think you just take whenever it's there. Yeah. You don't wait. Um, if you get a three for the right guy, you can take it. Um, but the most important thing for me, I think Italy have got to crash the glass. They have nobody trying to rebound for them at all. Uh, now, the other question is, do Croatia wait, foul, to use the foul that they have, and then foul again to send Italy to the line? I don't know. You just saw those numbers uh, with the graphic, 14 of 15 at the line for Italy. But, of course, they're tougher to make at this time of the game. Yes, that's the option if you're Croatia. If you foul them twice, Italy have to make free throws. If you do it early, if they miss, then, you know, it's given... It's meant that they, they've only got one point from the line and you get the ball back, even if they make both of them. If you do it with about 10 seconds to go, you've still got the opportunity to get a shot away. I'm surprised he hasn't brought... Um, Uh, Datomi back in. He shot it pretty well no, today. He's, he's yeah. uh, fouled out. Oh, of course he has. That's why. He Five fouls. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got 21.2 seconds. Italy trailing by two. This is the final of the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament here in Turin. The winner of this game goes to the Olympics. Gentile has it. They're running the play. Small line. And Bellinelli's being held there by Ukic. Foul. And they're going to call the foul now with 10.7 seconds remaining. So Croatia really small. And they're switching everything. Means that they haven't got an advantage on the switch. And they'll say go to the inside. So they're going to continue to do that. Melly's the one. He's got it. You know, I know he's not really their go-to guy. But I think Melly, if he screens for someone, rolls to the basket, he can post up a smaller man. Chantilly's going to inbound it right in front. He gets it to Bellinelli. Goes behind his back. Puts up a tough shot. The follow is good by Melly. 5.6 seconds remain. And now Croatia are going to call a timeout to talk about it and advance the ball. Here it is again. Look at this. He goes behind his back, gets the shot up, and Melly was able to get in and get one of the biggest taps of his career. Well, I said I, said I wanted someone from Italy to rebound, and that's why... Oh, I mean, it's a great move from Bellinelli, but great play from Melli. He's there with two Croatian defenders, and that's the negative of going small if you're Croatia. They got the advantage of switching, but when he missed, oh, tremendous effort from Melli. Okay. Nikolai Melli, 11 points and eight rebounds, but there's still a long time to get a shot if you're Croatia. I mean, six seconds, it's a... How many times have they got the ball to six seconds on a shot clock and Bogdanovic or Saric has come up with a play? I don't think that the time is really a factor right now. Well, don't forget, you know, Italy, if they foul, they'll put them on the line. So it's a, it's a brave, brave referee is going to make that call. He might not, he might not get out of Turin if he does make that call. I'd be surprised. Well, maybe they'll give it to Hazania. We've talked about the, about this being his coming out tournament. He hasn't been brilliant, but who knows? He won't shy away from a shot, that's for sure. So Aradori is going to guard Ukic. They advance the ball after the timeout. And... Ukic is going to inbound it. Bogdanovic has it. He gets in. He puts it up. He misses. And we're going to have overtime. Oh, would that have counted? That may have counted. We'll have to look and see again. Seventy all. We're going to overtime. I mean, we always said this was going to be arguably the closest qualify let's have a look at this one uh, Bogdanovic is in sense that he got fouled in the last possession I, I didn't see it hack it again great defense um, but we've said haven't we since we saw the teams coming in this is going to be a, you know just some incredible matchups overtime and the one to win
Well, I think they I think they did a good job of getting it to their man that they needed to get it to. If you're going to, you know, you get it to Bogdanovich, don't you? Even though he hasn't scored that many points in the second half, just two points in the second half. And it wasn't the worst look for, for him either. That's the type of shot he'll take on a regular basis. You know, other people would say it's pretty hard, but it's just, I mean, this is the play. We said Croatia have had guys stepping up, and Nicolo Melli has stepped up there for Italy. Tremendous work on the offensive glass. The foul is still an issue for Italy, though, aren't they? I mean, uh, that's Tomi, right. They don't have Gallinari yeah. in the in the fourth in the overtime. They don't have Tomi and and Hackett is on four as well. I wonder if he'll come out early in the overtime. Okay, the overtime is underway. 70 all between Italy and Croatia. Croatia had a shot to win it at the end, and Bogdanovic uh, missed from the corner, although he was well guarded. Now Sharditz going to post up Hackett, gets inside and goes strong. Hackett has to be careful about how he defends in there. That was yeah. a good call by Petrovic. Absolutely. Hackett doesn't want to, you know, can't be as physical as he usually is. The risk of that fifth foul, and Saric knew that. Bellinelli for three. Now, it's interesting, isn't it? Croatia go inside the Saric. Italy settle for a three. See if they go again to Saric. Nope, they're going to have Simon for three. That was from down in Milan way and did the ball go out of bounds yes it did so it goes back over to Croatia that's one of those occasions Bellinelli steals it he's away he's got a layup but Bogdanovic just got fingers on it tipped it onto his leg Italy bench, look, Italy bench looking on nervously. Ukic, Simon. Now Sharic gets inside, lost it, but is able to bat it. Now Bogdanovic for three. And Sharic goes up for the board. Another opportunity for Croatia. Three and a half minutes remaining now. Simon wide open. Good. Five point lead for Croatia. And all about the dive of Dario Saric once again. He dove to the basket. Didn't see who it was supposed to be guarding. Simon had to sprint in to take away Dario Saric, and that just left him open in the corner. Six threes, Simon. Eridori's going to put up a jumper. Good. A three. Boy, talk about clutch. What a time for your first points of the game. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, what a three. And Petrovic will ask for a timeout for the next dead ball. Ukic. Sharic guarded by Bellinelli. He's going to take it inside. And a foul called on Bellinelli. His fourth. All the confidence in the world for Aradore. Well, you got to play the game, don't you? You got to play with confidence. Yeah. And this was Simon uh, before that. Kissing his jersey after he made that. Four fouls. Boy, it's, we're going to see some uh, some people coming off the bench here shortly. For, for you'd feel for Italy. Because yeah. they have got. 
all kinds of foul trouble. Look at Hazania looking on. Or no, that's Caruselin looking on. I thought it was Hazania. <laughs> Hazania's on the floor. I hope he's not praying. Shardich. And clutch free throws. He Garrett, goes to 17 points and 13 rebounds. He was an absolute superstar of a junior, Darius Saric. You know, so well regarded as a junior player. And now this is his time at senior international, isn't it? You know, the ability is just starting to come through for him. He makes both. Could end up mentioning him in the same breath. Talking about the greats of Croatian basketball like Kukoc and Petrovic. Here goes Aradori. And he was hemmed in. Passes now Hackett. Spins into the lane. Over to Aradori. Another three. And the ball batted out to Hackett. Over to Aradori. He asked for it. He's got it. But it's off the back of the rim. With 2.10 remaining. Oh, they got two good looks, really, Italy. And, and, and they won't mind Aradore shooting them either. He's got some, uh, you know, he's got the ability to make them. He just did. He's confident shooting it. Croatia can get a real dagger here if they make this. Ukic with three on the shot clock. Short. Aradori. 1.45 to go. Hands off to Bellinelli. You don't need a three, Italy. Hackett gets inside, yeah. draws the foul from Hazonia. Much better from Daniel Hackett there. He's the one guy, isn't he, that trying to take people off the dribble, get into the lane. Everybody else just kind of sitting around the three-point line. Both teams playing for their Olympic lives right here. They're trying to get to Rio. And Hackett. Italy has shot it very well from the line. That's only their second miss. 14 of 16 now. One minute and 37 seconds to go. Gallinari is fouled out. Has to watch. And the second one is good. Sarge is going to inbound it to Ukic again. See if they can run a play for Shardich. And they're going to give it to Bogdanovich. Is he going to go or is he going to put one up? He's going to go right at Melly and gets it to Hazania. They pass it back to Bogdanovich for three. Good! That is a dagger. And look at Coach Petrovic. Oh, great team basketball from Croatia. They had all the options on that far side, but credit again, Ukic and Hazonia with the extra pass. And Bellinelli puts up a shot and is fouled. If he'd made that, it would have been a three-point play opportunity. You don't have to panic here, Italy, though. I mean, the crowd are emotional, obviously, but don't worry yet. You can make from the line here. You can cut the lead to four. You've still got a minute to go. You've got there at least two more shots, yeah. The three that takes Bogdanovic to 22 points. He had 17 in the first half. The problem they've got is that Croatia will take some time off the clock. Yeah, but they're going to get two more shots. They have to. So they don't need to panic. But they've got to get stops on the defensive end. That's the most important thing. Stop. Get a quick score. We're in overtime. It's been a, a very interesting game. The shot clock malfunction in the first quarter caused a 20-minute delay. And Bellinelli makes both. Now they need to play defense like their lives depend on it. Bellinelli with 18 points. Eight of nine at the line. Simon guarded by Gentile. It's the same play again. Saric will come ball screen. Well, Danovic back out to shot. It's six on the shot clock, and he loses it. Here comes Hackett up to Gentile. Oh, Gentile missed the layup. We might have to think about fouling now. That was their yeah. opportunity. And they do foul. It's so unfortunate because Bellinelli was absolutely flying down this right hand wing. He's just a step behind Hackett that he couldn't see him. If Hackett had known he was there, I think he would have gone to Bellinelli to hit the three. And now Bellinelli's had to sacrifice himself with that fifth foul. 
And we knew that was going to happen. Eventually, one of them would go. And it's Bellinelli. Italy up against it. Down four in overtime. And a break for Italy as Simon misses the first. Croatia, round of 16, humiliated last year by the Czech Republic. And here they are. They're about really within touching distance of the Olympics, but he misses both. Oh, oh and Gentile just threw it away. What was he doing? It was a play for it. It was Saric, though. Saric stole it. Oh, just so Every time you need a play, Dario Saric is there. And that is devastating for Italy and for Gentile, who missed the layup on the break. Now they've lost Melli to five fouls. 23.4 seconds remaining. And Bogdanovic, a good free throw shooter, goes to the line. Takes his time, makes the first. If he makes it, they've got to go for a three. If he misses, you do have the option of Daniel Hackett just go in immediately to the ring, try and get a quick two, see if he can draw a foul as well. It's got to be a three now. It's six down. No, so Italy will call timeout. See Perisic there, the Croatian international football player watching. And Italy come over to the bench, down six, and uh, I guess you could say needing a miracle, maybe. But the, the thing is, with this margin, uh, what Croatia will do is they'll go small and possibly even just foul as soon as it comes in, put you to the line for two rather than um, let you shoot three. three. Yeah. I mean, if even if you make two and they miss two, time's just going to be ticking away. So. It's a Croatia hold all the cards right now. They've got all the options. Italy need a miracle, really. And the other problem that Italy have got, you know, who's going to make the three for them? Hackett's not a great shooter. Cousins just had to come in. He's not going to make them. Aradori. Yeah, Aradori will step up without <laughs> a doubt. Gentile's struggled throughout. Tonal's just, just stepped into the game. Has barely played a minute. So Italy's Olympic hopes dangling by a thread. They will inbound it. And they're going to need something special. What a great moment for Croatian basketball this will be. And hostile territory if they can qualify for the Olympics. And Eridori gets it to Hackett at the line. And he gets that, so just in, in the lane, rather. And it's a two, though. They needed a three. And they foul with 12.4 seconds remaining. Well, Italy, I guess in a way, being punished uh, for a slow start, partially. The foul trouble. Five of 20 from beyond the three-point line hasn't helped as well. And as good as uh, Sharic has been tonight, it could be that Bogdanovic gets the MVP. He's got a game-high 25 points right now. And Petrovic uh, looks like he's on course for the most famous moment in his coaching career, getting Croatia back to the Olympics. Out of Doherty. Italy can't mess around. They got to put it up. Hack it. Eridori for three. Misses. Croatia rebound. And Croatia has spoiled the party here in Turin. It is Croatia that has qualified for the Olympics. Sharic has gone down. Hopefully he's okay. Fantastic achievement. Fantastic achievement for Croatia. Look at the celebrations. They have beaten Italy, the host, 84 to 78, to qualify for the Olympics. Unbelievable scenes. 
And you've got to say they deserve it. I mean, what a performance from Croatia. On the road here in Italy, Bogdanovic stepped up, Saric stepped up, Simon with 21 points stepped up, Planinic with 13 points stepped up. You know, they just had performances from all over the floor. So congratulations to Croatia. Absolutely. 84 to 78, Bogdanovic with the 26 points. Look at him. He really has been terrific. And, uh, you know, the fact that Croatia, I, I just can't get over that Croatia, that we watched kind of implode last year in the round of 16, has come out and done this. It is incredible. And this is the drama of the Olympic qualifying tournaments. Absolutely. I mean, Croatia came in. We, we were speaking before about all the players they're missing as well. Just like other teams, they, they haven't had everyone here, but what a tremendous performance. I mean, uh, you, you cannot give enough credit to that man, Bogdanovic, really, can you? Nope, and to be fair, we've uh, we've harped on uh, Petrovic's issues with his uh, complaining, but I mean, he's done a masterful job. Yeah, but, but today he didn't let it get to him. You know, they did get some tough calls. They did get the, uh, you know, the goaltend as well, I don't think was the right call, um, but what a performance and, and yeah coach Petrovic managed to keep his his team so focused throughout overtime he had all the play calls you know well Dario Saric with uh, 18 points 13 rebounds Simon with uh, 21 points five rebounds 26 points six rebounds for Bogdanovic Planinic don't forget what he did it really was a case of uh, just everybody really stepping up tonight for Croatia and don't forget, they also had to beat Greece. They had to take the real tough road to the title or to the to the win here in Turin. I mean, no offense to Mexico, but really they're not quite the same force as Greece. And Croatia have come out, and they're receiving some applause by this uh, Italian crowd, which recognizes they've been the better team. Yeah, and the, and the Croatians have recognized the fans as well for the fantastic atmosphere. We've had here in Turin, they celebrated the Italian fans who did make this a, a, a really good game. So as they celebrate, you know what? We've got two teams from the Balkans going, uh, two more teams or two teams from the Balkans going because Serbia also won tonight, winning against Puerto Rico at home 108 to 77. So they've joined the Olympic field and tomorrow either France or Canada will win and qualify for the Olympics. Arapovic uh, didn't play here at the Olympic qualifying tournament, but could be that he'll be on the on the plane ride to Rio for the Olympics. And Miro Bilan, just all the way. It's, it's just very difficult to win the OQT. And Italy know that. They had the home pressure. Just wasn't quite there. And much of that is owed to this uh, team right here. They were just too good. So the celebrations underway, Croatia going back to the Olympics. Uh, they made it in 2008. And they're going to announce the MVP of the OQT. And it has been won by Dario Saric, the MVP. So Dario Saric has been named the MVP of the Olympic qualifying tournament. He had the 18 points, the 13 rebounds. He also had the 11 points and the 10 rebounds in the first game against Italy and also the 16 and it's a Tiso the the award that is being given is the uh, is being presented by Tiso and it's Rateo Moratori the president of FIBA standing there with Dario Sardic the presenting him the Tiso watch the MVP watch. I think that could have easily gone to Bogdanovich as well, but I think Sharnic, it was one of the others, one of the two. Yeah, I mean, the biggest travesty is you had to pick one of them, didn't you? Bogdanovich, 25 points a game he's scored. He's the to tournament's leading scorer, and he hasn't won the award, but I, I think both of them have been absolutely brilliant. And really coming in, I thought it would be either uh, Sharnic or, or Bogdanovich. I mean, they've been the two best players, most consistent. Look at Dino Raja on the right. He's here. Emotional moment for him because he knows what it's like to play at the Olympics. And uh, it's just a 
A big moment for international basketball. You hate to see the Italians lose, especially as the host nation, but now they're being presented, the Croatians, with the ticket to Rio. It's going to be a long, hard rest of the summer, I guess, for Italy and their basketball fans. Uh, but not for Croatia. They'll take a break. They'll regroup. They have won the Rio ticket, the ticket to Rio, and I dare say they probably won't get much sleep tonight. <laughs> And you've got to say, I, I mean, you mentioned the, the tough road that they had, but overall, the, all the games, I, I think they are the deserved winner as well. They yeah, put no the, question. You know, they put the performances together. They've had to win here against Italy. You know, everything. It, it, for Croatia to win is, is credit to them and how well they've done. So here you have it. To the far right, you see Serbia and Croatia have crashed the Olympic party. And... The last ticket there will be decided between France and Canada. You've got Brazil as the host, the USA as the world champions making it. Nigeria is the after basket winners last year. Argentina and Venezuela when they reached the final of the FIBA Americas Championship last year. Asian champions China, Spain and Lithuania who reached the final of the Eurobasket and Australia who won the FIBA Oceania Championship. So now add a couple more European teams. You could end up having a, a clean sweep of European teams. That France-Canada game will be something else tomorrow. I can't wait to watch that one. Well, as we've seen today, though, Jeff, you can never count your chickens too early. I don't think many people, you know, thought that Italy would lose here at home, but you know, Croatia are on their way to Rio. Well, we hope that we've taken some of you back to the good old days of uh, the great Yugoslavian basketball. It's been a great, it's been a great, uh, a great old night. For, for the Balkans, hasn't it? Both Serbia and also Croatia here. And you've been able to watch really two, I'd say, Croatian greats kind of in the making. Bogdanovic and Šarić and some incredible performances from Simon and Planinic. And of course, uh, Alexander Petrovic deserves a lot of credit over there as coach. It's been our pleasure to bring it to you. Lloyd, any closing thoughts? Who's going to win the Olympics? <laughs> One of the teams is qualified, or France or Canada. There you go. <laughs> no, thank you, Jeff. It's been a pleasure to be here with you, as always, in Turin. Fabulous tournament, well organized, and a, and a great city as well. Yep. Thanks a lot for hosting it to Italy. And whenever you get a chance to come to Turin, you'd be making a big mistake if you said no. Get yourself over here. It's a wonderful place. So, one final time Croatia in overtime, winning it 84 to 78 over Italy to win the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament in Turin and to qualify for the Rio de Janeiro Games. Thanks for watching, everyone.